we're looking for everybody. And they're not. She had to get out of my go back to my room till I promise. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, I'm Joseph Mould. I'm the Director of Online Learning and Instructional Technology. Uh, started here in August and um, I previously came from the University of Toledo where I was an instructional designer for about 10 years. So I've been working with uh, e-learning for about 10 years and um, got my degree there at the University of Toledo and Bachelor of Fine Arts in uh, Cyber Art and then also my Master's in uh, Educational Technology, Instructional Design. And um, so today what we're going to work on is uh, talking about some of the important things to get started with the certification class. Um, we're going to make sure that everybody gets registered in the certification class, uh, which is built in Blackboard, and you need to complete the, um, the, the online course in order to be certified. So the face-to-face -face component is meant to assist you, and we're going to go cover things that aren't really going to be covered in the online class, so it'll be more hands-on stuff. Um, and so today, what we're going to focus on are some of the basics of operations in Blackboard. And we're also going to be talking about some of uh, what I would like to call S to the third power. I think it's um, probably the most important three things that every online class should have. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and start here. The, I, I think that every online class um, needs to have a start here page. Okay, every online class needs to have a landing site where the student lands the very first time they come into the class, the very first day they come into the class, it's called Start Here, and it, I, it, it essentially gives them an overview of what your class website is and how it operates, what you're expecting of students, what tools you're going to be using in that class. So that is the most important part. And in Quality Matters rubric, I'm not sure if, um, of, of those of you that are familiar with the rubric, but it puts it right up to the very top of the list. It is probably the most important thing for online students, is to have a Start Here page that um, gets them going without anxiety. That is a very clear map of what's going to go on in this because this learning management system or in this course environment. It is very, very, very important. A lot of people have started creating what they call start here video tours of the learning management system with webcams and, and programs like Jane. And uh, I'll kind of show you what I've done. Um, so the start here page is really important. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what a start here page looks like. So for this first part, we're just going to look at some stuff, and then we're going to go the second part into actually hands-on stuff, okay? So this is my Blackboard class, okay? This is the page that you will come into after you're registered in my Blackboard site. This is the page that you will come to. Okay, it's called Start Here, and it is the entry point of the class. Okay, that is important. And so I have the video here that the first thing you see is this video tour of the Start Here page. Right? And so the first thing the students can do. I'm Mould, Director of Online Learning and Instructional Technology here at Bay College, and I would like to give you a brief introduction to the uh, certification course for teaching online. Uh, I'm just going to go through the Blackboard course and kind of give you a virtual tour of the learning management system. All right, so uh, here we are in the Blackboard page, and um, this is the first page that I bring you into. This is the Start Here page. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm giving the students a video tour of the actual learning management system, right? So I make a little five minute or less video of how my class, you know, is navigated, where they can find the assignment Dropbox, where they can find the discussion board, where they can find the wiki tool, where they can find the blog, right? So that's important. It, it just really helps to reduce anxiety and, um, 
And then it's also important to have, this is the printed version that I built right within the learning management system. It's important to use the learning management system to the fullest extent possible, I think. Because then you don't have to worry about people having to open Word documents and PowerPoints and PDFs and things of that nature. Um, use it to the fullest extent possible. It doesn't mean that you can't use PDFs, PowerPoints, and Word documents. You can. But for the Start Here page especially, it's very important to use the learning management system because they see the information right there instantly. They don't have to open up a document. They don't freak out by saying, oh, there's nothing here, right? It's just right there as soon as they come into the class. And um, I think it's important to personalize the space, okay? We have to personalize the space, especially in an online environment. And so what I did was I added a photo of myself that I took with my webcam on my computer so that people can see me right away, right? They know what I look like. They know who I am, right? And with the video, they know what I sound like. They know my mannerisms, so they can hear me talking when they read my notes, right? Um, and then it's also, I think, important to use images throughout your documents. You really, really, really have to respect, you have to respect the white space in an online class. You have to respect the graphic design element of an online class because it's one of the very important things. When it's just a wall of words, it's going to be hard for some people to consume, OK? So in my Start Here page, I have, you know, I list the tools that I'm going to be using in this course. The announcements, the assignment Dropbox, the messages, the discussion board blog, wiki. I go and talk about quizzes and exams, where you can check your my grades. You know, it's on the left-hand navigation menu, right? I'm very direct. I like to, to, to make a little analogy where, let's say you've never been to Detroit, right? And somebody just takes you there, drops you off downtown, and says, you know, go find Kobo, Kobo Arena because that's where it's happening, right? It's like, that's what, a, for a student in an online class without a Start Here page, it's like getting dropped into the middle of a city without a map, right? they essentially have to figure it out themselves. And what the Start Here document does, it lets the students know what's going on, what you expect of them, how it's going on, what you're using the tools for, okay? And that's why it's also titled Start Here, because that's where you're starting, right? And so I put down here, this is where the modules are, this is the, the three most important documents in this course, my Start Here page, the syllabus, and the schedule. Okay? And those are the other two things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the syllabus just a little bit. Okay? Again, I've used the learning management system to, to post my syllabus. Okay? And I've used some images, I've respected the white space, and um, you know, images that kind of either do or do not have to do with what I'm talking about. A little humor, that's always a good thing. Um, this is kind of like the template that um, ILT has approved for online, course, uh, for online courses here at Bay, right? And, um, and it's important to have the start here, the syllabus, and the schedule as the top three links. I would like to see all online classes, all online classes here at Bay all of them should have these three top links. I would like to see consistency across the board. Where well, we have start here, syllabus, and schedule, no matter what division or department that you're from. If you're teaching an online class, I think those are the three most important links to have in your class. Now, the start here page can be replaced after the first two weeks with, let's say, announcements, right? Because you can start using the announcements tool after all of your new students are in. Because after those first two weeks, no new students are coming in, right? So then we can replace that, that Start Here page with the Announcements page, which is going to be posting current announcements, OK? Um, so again, your syllabus, what I think is the most important part of the syllabus is the course objectives and the course outcomes, OK? The course objectives. And the course outcomes, of course, can be combined, right? 
or they can be separate things. Now, of course, objectives are a bit more broad. All right? Course outcomes, you're defining with action words exactly what the student is going to learn in this class. Right? The course outcomes are saying, you're going to be able to do this after you take this class. Right? So it's important that our objectives and our outcomes are in very clear alignment with our assessments and our assignments. That is the way essentially you are being evaluated whether or not you're teaching this class efficiently is that if you're teaching to your course outcomes and your course objectives, <clears throat> they should be measurable. When you're writing course objectives, you use the ABCD method, which is audience, behavior, condition, and degree. Okay? And there's a lot of stuff online that you can Google that about. Um, I have a little bit of information here also in this class talking exactly about that. Um, but those, to me, are the two most important things in a syllabus. And again, we're, you, you, when, once we get logged into this online class, you can review this and you're gonna, you know, read all this information yourself, so I'm not gonna spend too much time here. But the schedule, a lot of people put the schedule inside of their syllabus for traditional classes. For an online class, the syllabus needs to be its own, I'm mean, sorry, the schedule needs to be its own link, okay? And it needs to be a link that the student can go to throughout the semester and see what is due, when it's due, how it's due, right? So I know that for, let's say, for week one, I have to go post an introduction, I have to submit paper one, I have to take quiz one, right? And it's good to have it built kind of in a matrix. And I've kind of boiled it down to, you know, with the four most important things here. Date, modules, or chapters, or lecture notes, or whatever you want to say. And then assignments do, that's the big, fat, you know, really important piece right in the middle. And then, of course, quizzes or tests or exams. You know, and you can modify this, too. But these are some of the, the four most important things that should be on a, a, you know, a schedule. And it should be built in type, like a matrix type document. And you can use a Word document or an Adobe PDF. But I've heard that there are some students here that don't have Word, you know, so they can't open it. So you need to think about that. And, you know, and maybe you're posting an, RT, an RTF, rich text format, or TXT, or at least a PDF that they get the free reader for, right? So think about that. Take that in consideration when you're posting documents that you know students are going to have to open, whether or not those students are going to be required to have that software. But what do you think about doing both? You know, we have it yeah. laid up using the LMS, and we mm -hmm. also have attachments. Th that's we good. Attachments. Is that but you have to remember done? to always update. The, they, they have to be a mirror of each other. Right. Yeah. That's the only thing with that. Yeah, I think that's fine. But you just need to make sure they mirror one another. Okay, so then the schedule. Those are the three most important links. Okay? How does this look when the students print it out? If it's not a PDF. So my question is, mm -hmm. a lot of our students will print, they'll come here to the computer lab, they'll right. print the schedule, they'll print the syllabus. Mm -hmm. So if you're using the LMS when the student goes to print it, yep. what does it look like? So it really depends on the computer they're using, to be honest with you. Macs have different functions, and then PC have different functions. And depending on the, the level of operating system that you're on, you have different options to print out from certain frames and stuff like that. So that question is a little, it's a little varied, depending on what computer you're using, what operating system you're using. You know? So you can test it out and see what it's going to look like for you when you print it out. But that doesn't mean what it's going to look like for students. You know? mm -hmm. So just be aware of that. Um, so uh, OK. It's about 11.17. So what I want to do is I, I want to, so who here is familiar with Blackboard? So it looks like a lot of us are kind of spread out. That's good. So what I want you to do is help one another, okay, throughout this hands-on process. If somebody gets behind, you know, I don't have an assistant to run around and help people, right? So you can raise your hand, ask questions, but ask the person next to you, right? So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to give you guys faculty training sites to log into Blackboard so that we can not use our live sites to actually, you know, work on this stuff. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch Firefox. 
Um, and I'll have to tell you right up front, I really prefer Firefox as a browser um, for online courses. I found a lot of problems with Internet Explorer, okay? Especially Explorer 9 now when you have to do this compatibility mode stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I found that Firefox works best. And I would also then recommend to your students that they use Firefox also to take tests online. Okay, and I have a very nice document that outlines testing procedures that I can share with you, that you could put up in your class. Would you share that, please? Yeah. I use it. Yeah. How does that work with all yours? You know, um, you know, it's really a kind of touch and go type of thing, right? Um, I use Chrome a little bit, um, but I, I have to say I probably have the most success with Firefox. So I, that's why I recommend using Firefox. So we're going to launch Firefox, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a faculty generic kind of training site, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and give you a number, and that number will be your training site, and it's also going to be your username and password. So it'll be faculty, the number that I give you, and it'll be your username and password. It'll also be the name of your class, okay? So Denise, you're number one, so you're faculty one. Okay. You'll be faculty two, faculty three, faculty four, faculty five, faculty six. Faculty 7, okay? Faculty 8, faculty 9, faculty 10, faculty 11, faculty 12, faculty 13, faculty 14, faculty 15, faculty 16, okay? So you launch your browser and you need to navigate to the Blackboard login area, which is under online services, or if you just roll over, you know, you click on Blackboard login takes you to this page. Just an FYI, this page also has our student support hours, and um, this is where the current hours are posted. So if you ever have questions about contacting student support here on campus, this is where you can find that information. It's also on our website. So what you're gonna do is just log in with the faculty number that I gave you. So you have to type in faculty? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's our username? It's your username and your password. They're both the same? Yes. So just to talk a little bit about the modules, these things are, are called modules. In, in Blackboard, you have modules in the Institution tab, okay? And then you also have modules on your inside of your Blackboard course. Um, in your Institution tab, the student will see all announcements from all classes. Okay. And if there's calendar postings on their Blackboard classes, the students will see all calendar postings from all classes. They are registered in. All right? And then over here, we have courses, or my courses. And you should see faculty, the number that I gave you listed there. Over on the left over here is where we can actually edit our information, our personal information. We can upload um, you know, an image of ourselves if we want an avatar or um, a picture of myself to what I'm doing blog postings. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this faculty 21. <clears throat> I'm sorry, faculty number, whatever I, whatever it is that, that you have, okay? And so when we come in here, this is the, the default home page. Bad. Yeah, messy. Should not be the default home page for your students. I just don't like this page. It's too much information. Okay, this should be put down at the bottom of the list and it should be called something like info or course information, something like that, okay? I don't like this page as a home page. It's too much information, right? So you want to click right here on faculty. No. Okay, now you can edit these things, these modules. Let's say, I think the four most important ones on here, I'm gonna get rid of that one by just clicking on the X box. I'm gonna get rid of this one, and I'm gonna say okay. And then, you know, am I using announcements? Yes. Am I using the calendar in the block, inside of Blackboard? If not, get rid of it. Okay. My tasks. Students can make tasks for themselves. Okay, I've narrowed it down to three things. All right. If I want to add more of those things, I can add these things over here by clicking on the Add Course Module button. Okay. Well, what we're going to do first is we're going to create the Start Here page. Okay? So, 
In order to create a start peer page, we have to create a content area called start here. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to roll over this add content button. It's the button at the very top of the page, and not the very top, but it's over towards the top on the left-hand side. It looks like a plus in a box. You roll over that and you want to say create content area. And we're going to call this start here. I want to make sure I click the box that says available to users. And I'm going to, sit, sit, I'm going to click on submit. All right? Okay, it took, my, it, it took the item that I created and it added it to the bottom of my list. That's not where I want it. Content area, is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Create content area. Oh, there. Oh, I thought it was going to be So you've got this one. You've actually called the content area? Is that the one you just created? Yes. Okay, so you can change the name by clicking on the downward facing chevron. Um, <clears throat> Then you can just name it and start here. So in Blackboard, you're going to see a lot of these downward facing chevrons. Okay? The downward facing chevrons are these little buttons. Like if you look over on your menu in Blackboard, you see these downward facing chevron buttons. Okay? And then here I can see there are some more over here. Oftentimes, if you're looking for, uh, to edit something inside of Blackboard, you're going to want to click on that button, and it's going to give you more options for that particular item. Okay? So, I've added my start here content area, but it's blank, right? And that's what this, I, this, what this icon means. It's like there's nothing there. If there's nothing there, the students won't see it. By default, Blackboard just says, look, there's nothing on this page, so I'm not going to show it to anybody, except the instructor who created it. Now, we have these upwards and downwards arrows, and when I, when I mouse over them without clicking, I get this little four-way arrow. I can take this item and drag it up to the top and drop it off, because that's where I want it to go. I want it to be at the very top of my, my course uh, menu. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to make the start here page the landing point for my students, okay? So I need to do that. But first I need to add some content. So what I'm gonna do is click on the link. Start here, okay? Takes me to this blank page. I wanna roll over, build content. I want to create an item, okay? I'm just gonna click on item. I'm going to call it start here. All right. And then for now, I'm just going to leave it just to start here up in the name field. And then I'm going to click on submit. Okay. Now this page has some content, and now we can make it our entry point for the class. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to go to customization in the control panel. Now in the control panel, it's something that only instructors see. Students don't see that. Only instructors see the control panel. Because you have control over the class. And then I'm going to go to style. I'm going to click on style. This allows me to do a lot of things. Okay, so I can change whether or not it's text or buttons. I can change the colors, all that stuff. Right now I've chosen, I mean this is the default color in this particular class. If I scroll down, however, to number four, select course entry point. I can say I want the start here page to be the page that all of my students come to. Okay? And then I need to click submit. We need to always remember to click submit no matter what we're doing. Because then it won't actually process. And once we do things in Blackboard, we normally get the green success bar up at the top. Right? saying it's been changed or it's been submitted. Yeah. So like course is giving us um, home system. So you, you probably don't have any content on your page. So if you go back up, scroll up, your start here page has either hidden or doesn't it click on the, okay, it's hidden right now. You need to click on the icon, the downward facing shovel on right here. Okay, click on that. And then you need to say show link. Because it won't, it won't select a link that's been hidden. So now you need to go back to the style and then select your entry point. If it's got a little box with an arrow through it, like yours does, because right now the link is hidden. You need to come over here, click 
click on this chevron. You have that one. And then show yes. link. Because you may not have checked the little box that says make available to students. Okay. Okay. If you didn't check the box That's that says right. make available not. to students, it automatically hides it. Okay. okay? Thank you. Yep. Is this where we're supposed to be? Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at it. I'm way over so here. you want to want to go to style under okay. customization, yeah. and then you chose the start your page. Okay. Then just go back to your starter page. Yeah. Click on the start your page. Okay, so now we've actually created our start here link. And we've made it the entry point for all of our students, right? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is click on the link, start here. And I want to edit this item now. And how do I edit the item? How do I, how do I edit this item? Down. You click, click on the downward and facing click. chevron, yes. and then you click on edit. Okay? That's how we edit all of our items in Blackboard. All right? Okay, so here I am. And this little thing right here is called a WYSIWYG. And WYSIWYG stands for? What you see is what you get. Awesome. That's from the what? <laughs> where's my cookie? Right. Where is that, where is that from? <laughs> what show is that from? You remember Flip Wilson show? Yeah. That's where it's from. Yeah. It's from his old uh, cross-dressing Geraldine character. Oh my god. That's where that's where we got what you see is what you get. So anyhow, the Wizzy Wig is what you see is what you get. That's an, that's what it stands for. And this is like a pared down version of the Microsoft Word right inside of the learning management system. Right? And you've seen these a lot in MindBay and other you know computer-based things where you can edit content, right? So we've got a lot of different icons up here, and some of them you will recognize and some of them you, you may not recognize. So you know we've got the spell check icon, we've got the add an image icon, we've got add a movie icon, we've got make a hyperlink with a little world thing, and, and then we've got you know bold, italic, underline, you know, formatting left, right, and then numbered and bulleted lists and going into HTML mode, stuff like that, okay? So this is the WYSIWYG, and this is where you can build your Start Here page, okay? So it's important to remember the best practice for working in a Start Here page, never copy directly from Microsoft Word. That's bad, okay? If you're going to copy something from Microsoft Word, are you going to build something in Microsoft Word first? What you should do is copy it from Microsoft Word, open up Notepad, or a text edit if you're on a Mac, and paste it inside a Notepad. That will remove all of the Microsoft Word formatting and, and crazy coding. Mm -hmm. Okay? Good. You can take it from a Notepad document, copy it into the WYSIWYG. You'll have to reformat it, but trust me, it's usually not a good thing when you copy directly from word into some sort of content editing area. Now that's going to also go for those of you that were in the web training stuff. It's usually not a good idea to copy and paste directly from Word into some other program because it's usually always picking up some other kind of funky code and you're wondering, well, I can't change this bold. I can't change this color. It's because it's buried in the code in the Microsoft document that you brought over. I realized that when I was working in MyBay creating quizzes, I was copying yeah. and pasting from Word into my quizzes. And it can really mess a lot of things oh, up. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, the right answer being in a different font. Yeah. That's what will happen sometimes when you cut face. Right. OK, so that's important, right? Another, another exactly. best practice. Now, this also goes for your students. Another best practice is if you're asking your students, to do essay questions in my day. If you're asking your students to do essay questions in Blackboard, if you're asking your students to do long, drawn out discussion postings in Blackboard, always have them write it up in a document that they can save directly to their desktop instead of relying on the web based system. Because it's going to, your internet browser is going to go sometimes and you're going to lose everything. Right? So you want to make sure you always got to copy that on your desktop. Right? And then you can copy it and paste it into this. Okay? When you're working in this, always make it a habit to hit submit to save your progress after a little while. You know? Like every five, ten minutes. Okay? So you can hit, let's say I'm starting to work on my start here document. So let's do this. The first thing I'm going to put in my start here document is a welcome. Where I'm going to introduce myself. And introduce the class a little bit. 
right? So let's say I've been working on this now for five, ten minutes, right? What I want to do is hit submit. That will save my progress, okay? There's no save function in the WYSIWYG. You have to submit it to the client in order for it to pick off the change. And then what do we do to go back and edit it? We click on the chevron, right? Then we go back to edit. Right? And so, and then we continue on with our introduction here, right? Now if we've typed it up in a Word document, we can paste that into a text-based, you know, like a notepad document and then paste it in here, right? Okay, so some of the tools in here. Let's let's say some of the tools. Uh, let me say I'm working on my document and I want to make a link to a website from my start here document. Let's say maybe um, you know, I have my own website that I would like students to just, you know, have as a reference. So what I can do is I can I want to select what I want to make a hyperlink. And then I'm going to click on the hyperlink tool and it brings up this tool, right? And so then I would put in, like if I knew the website, now what you should do is copy and paste. You should open up the website that you want, you know, to have it in there and copy it, and copy the actual URL. And I would do that by coming up here and saying, okay, I want to look for Bay's website. Right? And then I find Bay College's website. And let's say I want to take them to this particular page. <clears throat> I'm going to copy the entire URL, go back to my Blackboard environment. back to my Blackboard environment, and then I'm going to paste the URL in this URL field, right? And then I can say if I would like to open it in a new window, which launches it in a completely new window outside of Blackboard, and if I don't select that, then it opens it inside of Blackboard, okay? So you can select open a new window and say submit, and then it's made this particular, you know, text a hyperlink. Okay? So, that's how we add a hyperlink, right? And a lot of these things, like I said, are kind of self-explanatory. Numbered lists, bulleted lists, to the left, to the right, those type of things, right? And then we also have attach an image. If we wanted to put an image in here, attach an image, then we could say, if we already have one on my desktop, I can browse my computer, right? And then select the image and then open it, and then put it inside of there. Now, the important thing for images is you always have to have an alt text. You need to have alternative text for those people that are visually disabled, right? So you need to, like, say if you're using a picture of a, you know, red tree, you just type in there, red tree, right? And because it gives you a space to, for alternate text when you put your image in there, right? And you should always size your images. Your images shouldn't be, like, taking up the whole screen. Right, your images should be, you know, something manageable, and it should be consistent, manageable and consistent throughout the document. You know, it's best to try to have consistent sizes throughout your document. Right, not one that's this big, one that's that big, one that's this big, one that's that big. Consistency is a good thing, even with your fonts and your white space, and you want it to look nice and clean for the student. Right, we put too much text on top of each other without images or without some sort of visual cue, did the students get lost? <clears throat> okay, so some of us, like I know Tom has done this before, he, um, he will go out and get, uh, he'll embed things like videos, or he even made, a, he made an introduction video for your class, didn't you Tom? I did, I made two actually, uh, I made like an overview of it. And then I, uh, I have my complete syllabus there, of course, but I found out, or I realized I can't get through the syllabus in five minutes, so I right. went through, I made another syllabus, if you will, okay. the most important things, like mm -hmm. the objectives and so forth, and then mm -hmm. made a separate video of that. Right, okay. So that's where they begin. Right. And so, in, so there, there are times, like if I, I use Jing, right, and they'll give me a chunk of code that I want to um, 
but I want to actually embed the video like I showed you with my start here page. I had that video embedded inside of Blackboard. It wasn't a link out to it. I want to actually embed the video into my start here page. The way I can do that is this. There's this little, um, there's this, you can switch to or toggle to HTML source mode, okay? So you hit this toggle mode, it brings you into HTML code, right? So if I had the code, if I had went out and grabbed, copied my code, I can come in here and paste it right in here, right? And then once I paste my code in there, I go back outside of HTML source mode and then click submit and then my video or my YouTube or whatever will actually appear right in there, right? And actually Blackboard has already got a mashup tool built right into it that you can put YouTube videos in without even having to, having to paste or copy and paste source code. But if you ever do want to paste, copy and paste uh, or embed in Blackboard, that's, that's where you would paste the source code at, okay? And with code, it needs to be exact. You can't go messing with the code or it's gonna mess it up. Yeah. Um, I had done the link in here, and when I had to open a new window, it actually opened a new window inside of my window. Okay, and gotcha. And it froze up, so I had to reset it. Okay, so gotcha. Are you know, using Explorer? Uh, no, Firefox. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, test it out, it you know. It said, a message, your download will begin shortly if it doesn't, and then it opened up inside that window, so okay. in case anybody does have that happen. Right, yeah. That. Yep, so it's always important to test things out, right? And different computers, you know, students are different operating systems, different browsers, all of those things are variables, right? So, it's, you know, it's not going to work the same way for someone than it does for somebody else. Um, okay, so WYSIWYG, right? And then, uh, so Brent was talking about, you know, attaching a document, right? Having like, you know, having it all typed out mm -hmm. in the actual learning management system, but then attaching a document also. Mm -hmm. You know, and that may, would make it easier for students to print, right? So um, we could browse. This is the number two is where we can make an attachment, all right? So all we have to do is click on Browse My Computer, and then we would find wherever that document is, right? And I would say open it, and it brings it in as a DOCX. I'm going to stop right there and just warn you, do not use .docx files. It's usually bad because there's usually some sort of corruption that happens somewhere with someone. Mm -hmm. DOCX files, in my experience, have been bad files to work with. You should always say that in the previous version, which is .doc, which is like a 98, you know, 2001 nice. version file or whatever it is. It's 9703. 9703. So save it as a DOC, not a DOCX. And actually, X files are bad for just across the board, mm -hmm. even Excel. Uh, PowerPoint, um, the X files are usually bad. I would recommend against using DOC X files. Okay, so if you're going to use a document, use a .doc. You can track numbers of views here to see how many people have actually looked at the document. You want to make sure you permit you know users to view the content. You can select time and date restrictions. Now you wouldn't want to do that on a Start Here page. Right but you may want to do it somewhere down the road with some sort of document, mm -hmm. right? And that's how you would do that here. And then when you're done, click Submit, and there's my Start Here page, right? With my attachment <clears throat> up here at the top. Okay. Any questions about that? I just wanted to share for anybody who's like proactive, like if you want to set up your modules in advance, I always went in and I would make like week one and I would make it available on the date that mm -hmm. the syllabus, the course schedule, mm -hmm. just because for anybody who hasn't done it yet, it's a, it's a good way to get your course ready to go and then have it open up automatically. Is that how it looks for the students also with the attachment of the top? Sorry, yeah. You can turn off the edit mode. The edit mode is up here. Okay, this is a very, very important button. Okay, the edit mode is what toggles back and forth from you being able to edit Blackboard from you not being able to edit Blackboard, okay? So if you toggle this edit mode off, all of your options go away, or some of them do, right? And then you kind of see it as the students see it. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so 
one of the things that we've only got about 15 minutes here, and I'm willing to stay over for, for anyone who has additional questions. Um, but I really do think that in an online class, graphic design matters a whole bunch. Instructional design obviously does. The more structure that you have in your class, the less questions you're going to get from your students on where is this document, where is this document, where is this document, right? Okay, and that's very important. Structure is important. Timely responses are crucial. You have to answer emails within 24 hours with students. That's the competition that we're up against with the University of Phoenix, right? You have to answer emails within 24 hours. You have to grade assignments in a timely manner. You have to be there for your students. This is not a correspondence class. A correspondence class is, you go do this and a month later I'll check in on you. This is not a correspondence class. You have to check emails within 24 hours and you have to grade assignments in a timely manner. Right? It's very important, it's crucial to your student's success. Okay? Communication is also very important. You've got to build community in your online class. You do that through, maybe you have a discussion board where students post introductions to themselves. You get the ball rolling that way. They post a picture of themselves. You get the ball rolling that way. You maybe have a blog and you have students post twice a week about their troubles in the class, but then also maybe video tutorials they found that have helped them, links that, that have helped them, they can begin to help one another and not just rely on the instructor. They rely on one another and they learn from one another too. Your role is to guide them in the right direction. Make sure they're on the right path and not getting misinformation, right? So that's very important also. And also, um, I would say that, you know, good, good design of an online class is very important, right? You need to go out and look at some websites that you find visually appealing and try to bring some of that into your class. Are you going to put it in as a student for that course that you created? Yes. We're going to do the quick enroll thing here in a couple minutes, actually. So this was just really, you know, so the head mode button, you had to turn it back on in order to get your options back, right? This is a very brief introduction into what you can do here. Now, also, too, under the add content area, we also have, you can create a tool link. Now, a tool link would be the discussion board, the blog, the wiki, that kind of stuff, right, inside of Blackboard. Um, and a course link would actually be a link that already exists in Blackboard that you want to put on the actual course menu, um, and then you can create an external link here, you can create a module page here. You can also do these graphic design things like create subheader and create divider. Now if I click on create divider, it allows me to create a divider that I can then drag and create some visual space in my course menu. I've often seen course menus that look like they have about 50 links on the left hand side and I'm completely confused. Okay, and so are your students. It's like if you have a robot read you back your phone number, you know, 4199, you know why they break it up into three sets of three, sets of three, sets of four? It's because you can remember it better that way. And that's what you also want to do with your course menu. You want to break things into sets of three, sets of three, four at the most maybe, right? And that way you give them some visual space and you group things together that make sense, like communication, discussion, blogs, wikis, lecture notes, you know, and then you group into things like uh, my grades, stuff like that. Yeah. Just speaking of telephone numbers, I, I don't know where I got this idea, but uh, this wasn't mine. But I've asked my students to give me, when they leave a message, to repeat their telephone number at least twice. Right. And it has saved me so much time. Yeah. Because I, my, my previous rule was I would listen to it four times and if yeah. I couldn't get it, by yeah. the fourth time if they were SOL, but I've got to, been able to get back to everybody this year. Just I, know, I, I have to listen to my, my robot message about four times in order to get the phone number. Yeah. If somebody reads it to me on the message, I, I remember it right away. It's because they're breaking it up mm -hmm. the way it's meant to be remembered. You know? and, so, and so that's an important thing. You know, we want to make sure our course menu is easy to navigate. Okay? We don't want to put every single link that is in our class on the course menu. But we want to be within three clicks of everything that's in the class. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have my attention within six seconds, I'm out of it. That's what a good graphic design, web design principle. 
If you haven't caught my attention in six seconds, you probably won't. That's about our attention span these days. Um, so, you know, that's, that's an important thing to remember. These, these options over here, often sometimes people will click on the little high course menu and they'll say, what happened to my course menu? It's gone. Just because they clicked on the little course menu uh, button here, right? They've gone back and forth from there. Okay, so quick enroll into your online certification class is going to be done like this. Okay, what I want you to do first is log out of the class that you're in right now. All right? And now what I want you to do is log in with your, your Bay College username and password. page, you want to click on <coughs> courses. There's going to be a search course function up here on the top left. All right. What I want you to type in here, I think this will work, CC 101. And click go. Okay. So, sorry, what we need to do here is drop down this menu, change it from the name to the ID. Okay, course ID contains CC 101, then click go. And then you should see CC 101 up at the top there. What we want to do is click on the downward facing chevron and click on enroll. Okay, once you click on enroll, that will enroll you in the online certification class. So just hang on real quick. Oh, a space. CC space. Oh, I didn't have a space. Okay. Makes a bit of a difference. Okay. Okay, so now what you want to do is click on that chevron next to the class and then click on enroll. Okay, and then say submit. Okay, so I clicked on the downward chevron, I click on enroll, now I click on submit. Okay. Now I click on submit. It says you have self enrolled in this class. Say okay. And it takes you right in to the start here class. Okay. Okay. The start here class. The start here class. I already showed you the start here syllabus and schedule pages. I'm going to show you now just a brief little something here on the module pages. Now the modules, I don't have it. you need to say CC space 101, mm -hmm. course ID, not name. Course ID in the first one. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now Chevron. Yeah. Enroll. Now submit. Then OK. Down there. Is this the, um do you, did you set that when you created the course for self enrollment? I did. Okay. And um, <clears throat> so here we are. And I'm on the modules page right now. Right now I have three modules. Okay? It's the start here module, the syllabus module, and the schedule module. All right? In order to enter the module, I just click. Now I have my outcomes right here. This is what you will be able to do at the end of the module. It's, it's important to not only have outcomes in your syllabus, but to have outcomes on every single week or every single lecture note. Okay. So now I click on my Start Here module, it takes me into the actual Start Here page, or the actual Start Here module page. Okay, and then you can toggle using the table of contents, and you can toggle using the arrow. Okay, but what I want you to do is, of course, you're going to read all of this stuff. Okay, and what's going to happen is, so the next page that we go to is the lecture notes page. <clears throat> Now this resembles my start here page because I'm trying to model all of the behavior that I, that I think is in a good online class. This one is different because it talks about all of the tools and what they can do and you can incorporate that into yours if you want. Okay, so um, then that's the lecture notes page. Now I have a submit the start here page, right? Now what this is, what we're going to be doing for these first three modules is submitting 
our syllabus, our start here page, and our, our schedule via the discussion board as an attachment. And you all are going to comment on everybody's submission, okay? And you're all going to you're all going to like do peer review of one another, okay? And so that's how those three first assignments are going to go, all right? And then if I go back to you know, <clears throat> let me go back to the module here. back to my modules and then go back to start here. So that's the discussion board part of it, the submit your start here page, and then there's going to be a quiz, and then there's a hands-on part where you're actually going to watch some videos of how to do this in your own Blackboard class. If you do not have your own Blackboard class, you need to email me and I will create one for you, okay? And, and so then you're going to watch these videos on how to do this stuff, and then there's a summary Right? And if you want to know the schedule, you look at the schedule. Submit your Start Here page by February 10th. A Word document is fine. Reply to your peers by February 13th, 11.59. Okay? There are deadlines in this class. All right? You do have deadlines. And there are, I have set this up so that you, we can all be on the same page at the same time. In order for peer review to work, we all have to be on the same page in about the same time, uh, time space, okay? Are we to uh, comment on everybody's? Well, what I have here is, like if you would like to, uh, another thing I'll point to real quick, in my grades, I can have a nice little breakdown of what, I'm, what, what assignments are in here right now and how many points that they're worth, okay? So I have points possible. All of your discussion boards are going to be graded. All right, and, um, and then also, if you want to view a rubric, you can click on the view a rubric button that I created a rubric in Blackboard that tells you you get zero points if your reply is to your peers' work is of no help at all. So if you're completely negative <laughs> and you're a bastard, you're going to get zero points. Okay. So, but if you want five points, you have replied to at least one of your peers submitted to, uh, uh, your peers submitted work. Your replies are helpful until the point. If you want 10 points, you've replied to, a, to two or more of your peers, your replies about their submitted work are precise, helpful, to the point, and they help them in the right direction with good examples. So I've used the rubric tool, which will, uh, um, you know, in these classes I'll, I'll show you how to use too. So it's either zero, five, or 10, nothing in between those? <laughs> <laughs> Zero, five or ten. He's Probably. No. Well, that's not my so last class. Either no effort, effort. half-assed effort. Either guys have A's. Yeah. That's <laughs> As the rubric says. Say that's going nice. to be my grading scale. So. Say something nice. Say something that's, not nice. That, 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 that's how the, the, the modules are broken down. Now, every module is pretty much set up the same way. Consistency is important. Okay. So, if you're building an online class, if you build one module one way, you should build the next module similar to that, right? It just doesn't mean that you have to use the discussion board every time, but you need to say maybe you put the blog in the same about the same area as you did the discussion board last time if you're using the blog, right? So, and then that's where I put my info page, that page that, you know, is the default Blackboard page, that's all I have here. And another, a lot of things that, you know, the, the help page, you can look for help, but I also have this resources page where I'm going to be loading additional, additional resources. I have the Quality Matters rubric up there right now. Which may not, may, may not let me look at it because it's a PDF. Um, but if you look at the Quality Matters rubric, and I do recommend that you do, um, it's got a lot of really good information in it, and your online class should have a lot of what's in the, in the quality matters rubric. The rubric was developed by people that teach online for people that teach online. I'm all about peer review. I am not a top-down person at all. I like to work in a circle, okay, not from on top of a turtle. Um, so that's not my style, you know. Uh, I, I want this to be as peer reviewed as possible. You're, you're going to learn more from one another, you know, when it comes to, to teaching than, 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 than probably me, right? I, my speciality is instructional design and structure and learning management systems 
you know, I could operate and function if we use airplanes to deliver our content, right? I could care less what learning management system that we use, right? But I was I was told to pick a, to pick one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's what I did, yeah. right? And so and that doesn't mean that's not going to change because it will. As time goes on, if there's one constant thing in online learning, it's change. Okay, it is change. And things will constantly change. Speaking of change, Service Pack 8 is coming for Blackboard, and it'll look completely different, and it'll be better because the design options are about a thousand times better. It makes it look very retro, very like modern, and it doesn't look like it's you know in the Stone Ages here. Okay. Joseph, I'm going to play Joe's student here. Okay. Our first assignment is to post an introduction of ourselves. That's correct. So I click on introductions, I click on create thread, and it says subject line. Yeah, so you can say, Do you I know, put my name in the subject line? Do I, do I you, put hello You class? said create thread? Yeah. Yeah, you can say, hello, my name is Brent. You put your full name in there if you want. In the subject line? Sure. I don't need to, though. You, you have to have something in the subject yeah, line. Yeah, I can say hello, and that's it. I would say put your name in there, because then that way I yeah, know. So the point I'm making now is we're in an online environment. Mm -hmm. I'm a student. I just looked at the first assignment. Right. I have a question for my instructor. Where do I post my question to the instructor about how they want me to post regarding the subject line? Well, if you would have read the Start Here document. <laughs> exactly. I'm a student, and I didn't read it. <laughs> so, so, the Start Here, and we also see messages, which is right here. I hear McDonald's is <laughs> Oh. So the messages tool will allow you to send me messages, OK? We are not using email for this class. We are using the messages tool. Okay. The messages tool I prefer in Blackboard because it keeps the messages in this class all self-contained in this class, okay? And I think there are some people that would prefer to work that way, so that's why I'm introducing it here because it seems like a lot of people don't use it, and I think that if some people knew about it, they might use it. So the message tool is kind of like a self-contained email system within this particular class. And you okay. can message more than one person? Yeah, you can message, yeah, you just click on create message. Ooh, cool. So, um, so yeah, we're using the message tool. And that's where you would send me your question. And that's why the Start Here document is important. I do say that right there in the Start Here document. Um, we will be using messages as our primary mode of communication within the course. <coughs> and it can be found on the navigation menu. Okay, where's Sandy? Right here next to you. Okay, oh, so this way, concludes. Way too ambitious. This, this concludes <laughs> that wasn't very the uh, face to face session. Now, I've built these face to face sessions to coincide Thanks, for a couple of different reasons to help yeah, everybody along the yeah. path, right? I figured it out. Now, the face to face sessions aren't required, but they're helpful. And it's also to help me get this done. Right, because I'm building modules as I go. I just got these three modules done, which took a lot of time to build and tweak and stuff. And then as I go on, I'll, I'll, I'll create more modules. You know, and I've got the topical outline on there. We're talking about you know, start here, syllabus, schedule, and then we go into communication, community building, using blogs, wikis, things of that nature, which are things that MyBay doesn't have. MyBay does have a blog tool, but it's only a blog tool for the instructor. It's not a blog tool for the student. In Blackboard, you can say everybody gets their own blog space. In MyBay, you can't do that. In Blackboard, you can pick a wiki tool, use the wiki tool within the course environment that's password protected and all that jazz. MyBay, you can't do that, okay? Those are just a couple of reasons why I chose Blackboard. Because these Web 2.0 tools are tools of the future, are tools that people are using right now, right? And they're important tools to use. So, any, any questions? I have one. Okay. Um, Next time we want to get on this course, when yeah. you log on to Bay, it mm -hmm. will show up in our courses? It will. Okay, cool. Yep. Courses that you are taking, not teaching. Okay. It'll say, it'll it'll say my courses, and it'll say courses that you are teaching, oh, okay. Okay. and it'll list all the courses you're teaching, and the courses that you are taking, I think, appear beneath that. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Except it needs to be tweaked and, you know, oh, read the modules and tweak it to, to be an online thing. Post it. Yeah, then post it. Yeah, if you don't have one, then start to build one to the fullest extent that you can and post it to, to the site. Yeah, so if we're not teaching right now, just... 
But the, the thing about this class is to help you prepare for when you do start teaching and how much time and effort it takes to, pick, to make a syllabus, to make a schedule, to make a start here page. It takes a lot of time to tweak all of those things and get them just right. So the sooner you start, the better for your class. I mean, I've been in situations where I've had three days to build a syllabus and schedule, and it's just ridiculous, you know? The more time we have to prepare for those things, the better. Yeah, right. I live in email in the classes that I teach, mm -hmm. traditional and online, although online I, like, I want them to use the discussion board. I like this message feature. I'm sad to say that I've been yep. teaching online for a couple of years and I never knew it existed. Right. <laughs> well, that's why I'm introducing That's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, my question is, could this be set up where if my students do send me messages, I could get notified in my email system? That would trigger me a tool? Yeah. Will it forward it? No. Yeah, that would trigger me to open up Blackboard. No, why does not have Blackboard all the time and periodically pop in there and see if there's The message tool is meant to contain it within the class, yeah. not for forward it to emails and stuff. You can used to be able to do that in WebCT, but you can't do that in Blackboard. And they separate the tools in just specifically for that. Because the email isn't really an email inside of Blackboard, it's using the web. The, the Bay College email is a portal yeah. that it links into. Yeah. So that's how email works within the class. But with this class, I wanted to use messages. Because then that way it's not going to my email box where I, you know, I have to put out fires from all the online classes. I, have, I can go inside my Blackboard class and just focus on Blackboard. I can go in there once a day, twice a day, however many times a day I want to check it. Yeah. But I promise to check it you know, within 24 hours. So. Does it still have the alerts where you can be alerted by an email if something has changed? Because that might be what you'd be looking for, is that anytime something's posted, you get an alert saying that something has been posted. Yeah, you, so. you can sign up to like the, uh, in, in the discussion board and stuff. If you turn on, if I, if like if you turn on, uh, like, a, so like a, if you, if you turn on, um, I forget what it's called, but you can actually subscribe. And then it'll send you an email if anybody posts anything to the discussion board. I'm not sure if I have that option turned on, but I can turn it on. Okay, thank you.